Welcome to the Maria Heller Show, on the net since 2000 and still going strong. If you feel like you're not getting the real news, if you feel like you're not connected spiritually, you have found your home. Maria covers a wide range of topics as only a snarky New Yorker can. Straight up, no chaser. No censorship, no corporate sponsors, thus true freedom of speech. Your subscription gives you unlimited access as a member of the smartest audience on earth. Relax and enjoy the education. Now here's Maria. Good morning world. Maria here alive and kicking. Uh, Welcome to... Hell and high water with myself and Chuck O'Celli, and we always seem to be in hell or high water these days. It has been feels like an eternity of it for the past few years. But hey, today's Christmas, Christmas Eve, and I can't believe Chuck and I are doing a show. I overslept and Chuck forgot it was Tuesday. So that kind of tells you where our mental state is at today. So without further ado, let me say good morning to Chuck O'Celli. Good morning, Chuck. Yeah, is it morning? Is it? I don't even know what day it is anymore, Maria. It's okay. You know what? Uh, it, it's not just the holiday season. It's just everything. I know. It's too much. And I'm like, you kind of remind me of that old 60s song. Was uh, Does anybody really know what time it is? Does anybody really care? Uh, but, you know, I woke up this morning and, I, you know, listen, I've been alive forever. Okay. Truthfully, this is my last spin on this planet, if I can help it. Uh, And, you know, having lived through so much, having been born, you know, a million years ago, uh, every single year, all I think about on Christmas and as Christmas approaches is John Lennon's song, So This Is Christmas. And every year I get depressed because nothing changes for the better. And I know there's people out there that are going to say, oh, Maria, this changed, that changed. Yeah, nothing changed for the better. And, you know, even last week when my son was here, we were surfing through YouTube. And I, I was, you know, looking at some of the video, the, uh, the music videos. And, of course, I watched So This Is Christmas with John. And I just started crying. And my son just slipped to me. He says, Ma, why are you crying? I said, because what the fuck's changed? And he says, you know, you're you're such a sweet, emotional, caring person. And I made the mistake of tripping on the next one, which was We Are the World, when they all all those great stars were in it. And the same thing happened. And I said to him, you know what? It's time to switch. We need to go watch Supernatural. Because there's more truth in that than in what my generation hoped for, for this century. Right. So, right. you know, well, it's, it is, you know, it's those, bittersweet. Those two songs, those two songs are interesting because I remember the John Lennon song, but I was little, you know, right. uh, when that was sort of being becoming popular. Uh, but I also recall there, there was this uh, group called Band-Aid, which was like the British uh, music stars, you know, the day before everything was global, right? Right. <laughs> Uh, do they know it's Christmas time? Right. And, <clears throat> you know, it's interesting that uh, the, the We Are the World thing ended up being USA for Africa and right. Live Aid, which was an interesting event for my generation. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, uh, I was a teenager. And I, I actually, I, I was there, by the way. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I was, uh, I was in Philadelphia for the show uh, on, on this continent. Um, you know, there, there's... A lot of things that could have changed. I know. A lot of things that could have been done. Uh, a lot of people that uh, maybe wouldn't have had to starve to death. A lot of generations that wouldn't have had to suffer. But, you know, the almighty dollars, shekels, or whatever other digits end up filling up your virtual currency at this point. It's all irrelevant. Uh, it, it seems like that's the only motivation that keeps people going. And it's a, a sad and scary thing uh, all the time. Now, I don't get into the Christmas spirit either. I never have, to be honest with you. Uh, but I always found it interesting how people would uh, slobber over this time of year, slobber over the time right after the solstice, which, by the way, again, happy birthday, Mom. Oh, thanks, Chuck. I, by the way, I promised my listeners birthday pictures, which I forgot to send out yesterday. So I'm going to make myself a note to send you some of them today when I blurb the show. Oh, excellent. Yeah, de- definitely do that. Uh, I think the last pictures we got were you and your son in the restaurant, so. Oh, that's a long time ago. 
But uh, listen, you know, I, the older I get, the more disgusted I get with, you know, what people are willing to accept. Uh, and, and it's it's sad. And, you know, when you look at, you know, the economy, they talk about how great the economy's doing when there's so many ho- homeless people, the uptick in homeless in the past year alone. How many homeless people are dying on the streets? How many children are starving? You got a government that cuts your food stamps, trying to slaughter Obamacare, trying to take our Social Security, which Bob Chapman, the international forecaster, predicted on my show 15 years ago before he died of mysterious circumstance. Uh, And, you know, I look around and, you know, here even in my own town, because, you know, this administration wants to make it look like the homeless is just a Californian problem. We've got lots of new homeless people in my little town of 15,000 people. You know, and when I'm leaving or driving out of the store and they're parked on the sidewalk and they're veterans and they're sitting there with their pups and whatnot, you know, if I'm stopped at the light, yeah, I'm going to roll down my window and give them a couple of bucks because they need it more than I do. And I don't care what they do with that money. Do you know what I mean? People are all, oh, if you give them a handout, they're going to buy alcohol. Well, if anybody needs to buy alcohol, it's them. You know what I mean? Uh, you know, that's another thing, too, is that, uh, oh, you know, I, I would give money to the homeless vets, but they're going to spend it on booze or what. You know what? <clears throat> Probably that guy has earned that drink. You not understand? Exactly. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not concerned about it. And as a matter of fact, if it numbs his misery for uh, a couple hours, if it makes his life easier for a day, uh, who am I to judge what he decides to do? Well, and then it's also stereotyping the homeless when the people driving by don't realize the majority of Americans are one paycheck away from being on the street themselves. So or, or where's less, the compassion? Where's the compassion? Where's the empathy? Where are the lessons of Jesus uh, all through the year, let alone only on Christmas? You know, I think about what Michael Reikia has said on my show ever since he's been on it. He's got to be on my show now at close to 10 years. You know, every Christmas he says the same thing. You know, we worship the messenger, never got the message. Yeah, that's the truth. I I, I got to tell you, and when, when we see things going on uh, regarding this now, it, it's it's amazing. Like the whole kerfuffle this past week. With uh, Christianity Today and Trump and all that, and they gained uh, subscribers out of the deal. But uh, it was interesting that uh, somebody finally writes an editorial to say, you know, this guy isn't very Christian, uh, mm-hmm. evangelicals. Uh, of course, uh, the the revered Franklin Graham was another fake university uh, over there, you know, running it for for you know for God, uh, while he profits mightily. And all that good stuff because he's the son of Billy Graham, who is another character that, you know, you should really deeply investigate if you think that he was all right. good for everybody all the time. Right. Um, you know, I'm just saying, uh, it, it's it's interesting to watch that, that nonsense go on and the fact that people just are disconnected from the realities that they are speaking to. You know, yeah, oh, we're in the Christmas spirit and we're giving, but not going to give a dollar to somebody because they're afraid they're going to buy a bottle. You're, you're, you're in the spirit of giving, and you, what are you doing? Right, but that's what also assuming. You're assuming what they're going to do. You know, I have another friend. Her choice is to just take, buy them lunch. Okay, she'll go like into a fast food place, come back with a bag of food. Not wrong with that either, you know. No, I've done that. But, you know, if for people to have no compassion, to see the human race... You know, there's a new uh, a new hit show that just started. God, let me think what I'm watching that on. It's I don't know. It's probably Hulu. Maybe it's ne- it is. It's Netflix. It's called Witcher. Okay, it's supposed to be I guess something like you know Game of Thrones, except everybody says it's already better. Uh, but you know, I watched an episode last night where these other non-human beings were talking about the damage humans have done to their world. Actually, these other non-humans were elves, okay? Now, huh. elves, when you think about elves, elves are part of the elementals. They're part of the divic kingdom. Uh, I've yeah, talked they, don't, about, they don't make cookies, folks. Right. I talk, so, you know. They hold the planet together. You know, Mark, uh, Michael, Rick here, and I have discussed that on the show many times, like the animals. The animals are the divas that basically hold this planet together, and look what we do to them. 
But when the elves were telling this witcher guy, who happens to be drop-dead gorgeous, so already he's got a tremendous female following, including myself, uh, (laughs) what humans have done to him, uh, to them, and how afraid they are, you know, to even come out because they'll be slaughtered, uh, you know, he he tries to defend the humans, but you know what? There is no defense. Uh, And and either way, I don't want to ruin the show for anybody because it's brand new, so, you know, everybody tune on over and see if you agree with me. Uh, but, um, you know, when you look at it, you know, sometimes, sometimes TV and the movies tell us the truth. Mm-hmm. And who told us the truth the most besides George Orwell and Adu Huxley? Okay. Because here we are living in a blend of 1984 and Brave New World. Yeah. And yeah, you... that, 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 that is the weirdest thing to observe is that it is a blend. You know, people refer to 1984 a lot and forget Brave New World. Right. But uh, both of them are quite relevant. And when you put them together, it's uh, it, it's very much a tarot deck to show you what the future was going to be. Exactly. Um, well, you know, at my birthday party, my good friend, Dr. Tom Lombardo, he's been uh, with the Futurist Society for years. And I hadn't seen Tom in God knows how many years, maybe 10 and I actually did some interviews with him back in the day, even when I was on regular radio, because one thing he said, which proves to be true, and he's got a new book out. As soon as I read it, I'll get him back on the show. He said the best people to predict the future have been science fiction writers. Mm. And you know what? That's the truth of it. You can't, and he's totally into you know all kinds of science fiction. He just gave me his new book, which is called Science Fiction. Uh, so... Um, You know, there are so many bright lights on this planet, so many smart people, but they have no place. They have no voice. You're not going to see these people. You're not going to see the people I have on my show on mainstream media. You're not going to see them published in, you know, mainstream magazines. Uh, The truth is always hidden, but that doesn't make it impossible to find. No, that's true, but you know, don't don't entirely dismiss the mainstream media uh, because occasionally they stumble upon something interesting. They either have a great writer or there is a great personality that's contained there. The only reason why I point this out is because I recently did an interview. I don't know if you saw it with uh, Katie Caden, uh, who uh, ended up placing third on The Voice. <laughs> oh no, I didn't. Don't forget, I just came off another thirty-day ban on Facebook. Uh, Ah, uh, okay. Well, anyways, uh, Katie Caden, you, you, you ought to look at her story. Uh, powerful, uh, interesting story about, uh, you know, but basically she's, she's a heavy lady. She's always been a heavy lady. She's a brilliant singer. I mean, on the level of Aretha Franklin, on the level of Gladys Knight, on the level of those kind of women. Uh, and she is extremely talented. I, I do not understand how it is she didn't win The Voice, but it doesn't matter. Uh, I got an interview with her. I guarantee you she's going to be a star. That's um, great. I, you know, I took a listen to uh, her tearing up an Etta James song. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I mean, she is amazing. Uh, but just a bright light that happened to burn her way right on through that MSM nonsense. John Legend was her coach. John Legend should be grateful to whatever God he prays to that he was able to be around the kind of talent this woman has. And uh, she didn't get into it until later in life because she was actually, I mean, I'm going to be rude about it, but she was pretty much uh, worried about being a fat girl on stage, pretty much. Well, what uh, about that girl that just, like, look, I don't pay attention to modern music, but this gal that was on Saturday Night Live this weekend was obviously very famous. She's pretty big, to say the least, and there she is in skimpy clothes not caring. And she had a really, really good voice. Listen, you know me as a mother and a grandmother. I'm obsessed with health. So Mm -hmm. only thing I worry about with these gals is their health because, you know, you have that kind of talent. Look, Jennifer Hudson started out the same way. Uh, And it didn't affect her voice, but it certainly helped her career when she got healthy. Mm -hmm. Uh, So to me, it's always about health. You know, it's not about looks. It's about how strong are you, how healthy are you? Because, listen... We better be damn strong for what's coming down the road. Oh, I hear you. No, I, I was just pointing it out as how do you one, spell one how things. do you spell her last name because I want to look her up, look it up. Oh, Caden, K A D A N. D A N. Okay. 
Just, yeah, I'll you might you might want to look her up. I'm oh, telling yeah, you, I'll good stuff. Take sure. a listen. Absolutely. But, you know, um, listen, you look at people like John Lennon, you look at people like Elvis, you look at people like Michael Jackson, uh, yeah. you know, and a lot of people, you know, Elvis wasn't just rock and roll. Elvis put out a lot of powerful music. And even in his day, even when he wanted to do his Christmas special, they didn't want him to sing certain songs. One of them was in the ghetto. Another one was If I Can Dream. And because they had, uh, you know, they had social meaning to the songs. And, and listen, it was Elvis. He said, I promised my mother I was going to sing that song. And if I can't sing it, guess what? There's no special. Uh, right. But when you look at all these types of people, even Prince, you know, there's so many you can toss in. Or as, you know, Dave McGowan's book said, The 27 Club. You know, how many young, talented people died at 27 back in right. the 60s? To me, I honestly believe that they were meant to be just like shooting stars. They came in, they got their work done, they got the message out, and they left. You know, Princess Diana. I mean, the list goes on and on. There, you know, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Jim Morrison, Janis uh, Joplin. Absolutely. Exactly. And I don't think you know. Listen, I grew up with you know Frank Sinatra. Okay, my mother was you know big Frank Sinatra fan. Uh, but when you look at Frank Sinatra, he stayed too long, okay? Everybody said, oh, he was going to be remembered the same as Elvis. Well, he wasn't, okay, because he, he lived too long. I remember in his last years where he'd get on stage and didn't even remember the words to his own songs. So he kind of became a parody of himself. So whatever he really put out there, and I don't think any of it was, you know, earth-changing. It was just nice music. Uh, and then you compare it to, you know, to Elvis. I mean... I've been watching more Elvis imitators, and I'm like, okay, Elvis has been dead since, you know, what, 40 years? And mm -hmm. people still worship him, spend their entire life and career becoming Elvis, okay? Right. Uh, you know, and you could say the same for Marilyn Monroe. I mean, you, you know the people. Look at, look at Michael Jackson. I mean, I watched a video of, uh, Jesus, I want to say, was it Bruno Mars dancing with Michael Jackson? But it really wasn't mm -hmm. Michael Jackson. And you know what? I couldn't tell. And I said, look at this. These people are giving future people full-time employment just based on their work. Uh, so I don't think that some souls on this planet were meant to be here a long time. Yeah, it's sad when they leave, but look at what they leave behind. Right, right. Well, that's, that's the thing about it. And, you know, I, I, I do love talking music. Uh, it, it is uh, it is one of those things that creates icons, that creates uh, movements. You know, it is it is literally one of one of the magics that uh, that humanity has been allowed to participate in. And it, it it's just uh, what 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 can I say? Yeah, there are shooting stars. There are people that make monolithic. Uh, catalogs of things, you know, mm -hmm. uh, that are just uh, still absolutely uh, with, without duplication, without, you know, without anything to compare it to. Uh, and and there have been a lot of them, and it's just been really fascinating to watch that. Um, right. Then you could go even to spiritual teachers. You know, Ram Das died yesterday. Uh, I wasn't a huge fan, but I'm not going to discount his work. And that's the problem. I think a lot of people try to attack the messenger and never get the message. Uh, and don't realize, you know, they're just human. You know, people used to like to talk shit about Sun Bear. And Sun Bear's answer was always the same. I'm just like you. I'm just another stupid trying to figure it out. Pay attention to my work. Uh, and, you know, you look at that. You look at the Gandhis. You look at, you know, some of these spiritual leaders from the, from the Far East. Uh, whether you want to believe Jesus, all the rest. We've always had these kind of teachers saying, here's the right way. And they get crucified. But hey, now we have a new god. His name's Donald Trump. Uh, <laughs> everything has to go back to this guy. How this could is... it not? He sucks up all the oxygen on the planet, not just in the room, on the planet. You know, another right. Christian magazine, after Christianity Today put out that scathing piece on him, and Trump went nuts, of course. Uh, another Christian magazine, uh, I have the name for my next news show, I, I can't remember offhand right now, but they decide to put out a pro-Trump um, uh, editorial. And one of their writers who's been writing there, their top journalist for like 10 years, quit because he says he can't be a part of it. They're all, all, they're all out of their minds now. 
So, you know, this morning I, I put up a meme uh, that, you know, it was that uh, meme, I'm sure you've seen it, of Trump in a cartoon nailed to a cross like the new messiah of the GOP. Right. And I literally wrote on it, all you Trump Christians, you better take check of if this guy's your God or if Jesus is your God, because your soul counts, your soul is counting on it. People don't realize every decision you make here, whether you make one or you don't, because there's a lot of people that always give me that, well, I don't do anything wrong. Well, you're not doing anything right either. Uh, That's the it's, problem. Right, it's going to affect where you're allowed to go, if anywhere, after this life. So once again, referring to Michael Reiki's book, Your Life After Death, which everybody should read. Um, and, you know, if you're just in it for this earthly life, you absolutely have missed the message. Absolutely true. So, okay, let's, uh, let's switch off from music and homelessness and Christmas. And I have to ask you, did you watch the debate last week? Uh, you know what? I, I watched a good deal of it, and I, I have some thoughts, Maria, but I'd like to hear yours first. Well, first I was relieved that there were only seven people on the stage. Yeah, it was a little easier to follow that way. All so. right. Oh. I actually was relieved because I got to hear some of their thoughts and actual messages instead of the bickering and stupidity of, you know, let's spend three hours talking about health care and arguing with each other. Uh, and I was, I got a little over some of my bad feelings towards some of the candidates because I actually got to hear some of what they sounded like, what they were talking about. And believe it or not, I liked what Tom Steyer had to say the whole time. And I was like, wow, am I losing my grip here or what? Amy Klobuchar, who I never cared for, I turned on her too. And I said, mm, I like a lot of what she's saying. I like a lot of what Andrew Yang is saying, and he shouldn't be up there as a token. I mean, that kid knows a lot of stuff. I think he's fun. I don't think he has a chance in hell. Uh, and it's interesting to see that now Mayor Pete is the one being demonized instead of Elizabeth uh, Warren. So it's well, crazy how that bumps around. Yeah, I think Elizabeth Warren is going to fall out of favor here because she's just... Uh, <sighs> You know, she she's going to be too much of a reminder of the Hillary style, okay? Although she's got a personality unlike Hillary, right? right? Uh, but she's going to be too much of a reminder of Hillary. i, I got to be honest with you, the best soundbite of the night was pretty much out of Bernie Sanders' mouth. Well, Bernie won the debate as usual as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, but basically, I mean, look, you can't beat the line of, uh, listen, don't worry, you got 39 billionaires, he's got 40, you'll catch up. I have confidence in your uh, <laughs> strength and agility, young man. Uh, yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, of course, we had the controversy about the wine cave, right? Right. <laughs> Who even knew that existed? But you know what? I don't know if it was Elizabeth Warren that said it, because I read so, many, so much shit online. Uh, you still there, Chuck? I heard a click. Yeah, I just uh, muted there for a second. Sorry. <laughs> oh, okay. But she said it was like uh, eyes wide shut without the sex. I, Yikes. <laughs> I, I, maybe it was a meme I saw. I really can't credit that to Elizabeth Warren. I don't think she would say something like that. Yeah, I think that must have been a meme, but still. But it's you know a good what? one. The, the visual is strange, and, and somehow, Maria, uh, the Eyes Wide Shut commentary, you would think would have to involve sex. But without the sex, I don't know if that's more creepy or less creepy, uh. or. I, I'm confused. <laughs> <laughs> so, well. If, if, if none of you know what we're referring to, go uh, look up the movie Eyes Wide Shut because yes. it pretty much shows you the rulers of this world, okay? It was like the Bohemian Grove and Skull and Bones rolled into one. Mm, a Stanley Kubrick film. Right, with a, lot of, with a lot of demonistic shit in it as well. Uh, so it's not, a, it's not a Christmas movie. I want to warn everybody, it's not a Christmas movie. Uh, <laughs> no, not a Christmas movie, you're right. <laughs> now, I have to tell you, they did a remake of A Christmas Carol. I mentioned it on the show uh, yesterday. God, it felt like last week already. I mentioned it on the show yesterday, and it's just called A Christmas Carol with Guy Pierce. It's three hours long, and they obviously have taken uh, license with the original story. Uh, it's a very good movie worth watching. 
Really? Yeah, yeah. I was surprised. Okay. I said, holy crap, a three-hour movie. So, you know, when I know something's a three-hour movie, I try to start watching it at 6 o'clock because by 10.30, I'm gone. You know what I mean? Right, right. <laughs> but, you know, they, they altered it to, you know, it's very interesting. You know, I mean, whoever thought of Ebenezer Scrooge having, you know, uh, inner child problems from an abusive childhood... So suffice it to say, it was a little, I thought, wow, did John Bradshaw r write this revision? Because it's all about, you know, inner child healing. Uh, so, you know, that's another good movie. You can watch that on Christmas. I don't know if your young son would enjoy it or not, but uh, it, it's something to see. But, you know, listen, for years, you know, It's a Wonderful Life, uh, A Christmas Carol, A Miracle on 34th Street. You know, you can name these movies off left and right. They've all been telling us the same message of charity, love, sharing, giving. Wow. People just see them as movies, okay? And then they, you see people in the stores, they're like animals, you know, tra trampling on top of each other, you know, to get that last whatever item the television convinced them they have to buy for somebody they love. Uh, you know, and, and where's the charity? You know, that should be every day. You know, I mean, people, I don't remember who it was that asked me. God knows it was years ago on the show. Somebody said to me, Maria, if all of a sudden somebody donated a uh, million dollars to you, what would you do? What would you do with a million dollars? That's when, you know, a million dollars wasn't considered, you know, not a lot of money. Still a lot of money to me, right? But yeah, I it's look plenty, plenty to me in case anybody wants to donate it to me. Uh, I'm I'm willing to accept it and get very excited about it, just so you know. <laughs> me too. Funny. I'll jump up and down and I'll call my show your name. <laughs> Whoever it exactly. is. Exactly. I'll name the show after you. But you I thought it. about it because it's a good question. Okay. You gotta really think about it. How would your life change? And I looked around, you know, and my friends think I'm crazy. You know, I'm okay with the car I drive. I'm okay with the house I live in. You know, I might want to do some repair. You know what I mean? Uh, but I thought and thought and thought about it, and I realized the only thing I would do was open up my show. I would spend that whole money on opening up my show in as many markets as I could buy just to get this world to turn around. I couldn't think of anything else. Do you know what I mean? Because how much crap do you need? How much stuff do you really need? Uh, so, you know, if, if you look at a world run by multi-billionaires, the greediest, selfie, selfish Ebenezer Scrooges on the planet, how much money does one person really need? How can they live with themselves? looking at the plight of, you know, everybody else. But then again, that movie, the, that documentary, The Family, pretty much explains it because they think they're the only ones blessed by God because they're rich. That's the thing. You know, it, it's, uh, it, it's amazing to consider because, again, uh, if confronted with the same problem, right, you know, first of all, you gotta, you got to take care of the tax man. But uh, let's just say I could have that million clear, Probably half of it would go to doing the same thing you're talking about, but the other half, I got to tell you, Maria, I would probably personally uh, make sure that I improved uh, a bunch of lives, you know, uh, just made things better for a bunch of people that I encounter here and there. Right. Um, and this is something that uh, that I would gladly do if I had the slack to do it with, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, so I don't know. I, I, I know I would do... What you're saying as well, because uh, I've been investigating and looking into and trying to uh, put myself in more places, you know, so that uh, a different message gets out there, at least, you know, uh, that, that, that people can have a different way of thinking about things, looking at things, and, uh, and, and have a chance to at least have the knowledge if they wish to have it. You know, ignorance to me is because you were never presented the knowledge. Now, stupidity is a choice. Exactly. <laughs> okay? So I figure I'll let them be stupid because they can't say they were ignorant if I can get out there in as many places as I can. So uh, that's that's probably where I'd be at. And uh, believe me, uh, I'd, I'd, I'd help you along the way, too. <laughs> oh, well, of course. I have a list. I keep a list of people that I would help. So... So, you know, visualization's a good part of it. Just be ready just in case it actually happens, you know? I mean? Oh, yeah. 
Uh, but, you know, I do what I can. Like, you know, every night when I send Reiki out to people that have asked for it or people that I care for, I, of course, send it to you and your family. Uh, you know, I send it to uh, Monica, you know, Monica Sepulveda. Uh, right. I send it to people I care about, people that are doing the hard work and seeing what the world would call little reward. Uh, but, yeah. but, you know, my dad taught us, you know, at a very young age, and I mean, we were certainly not rich, uh, that, you know, your rewards in heaven are more important than anything you're going to get here. Uh, yeah. So, you know, you, you taught, shared with me before the show that even though you are struggling yourself, you took in a family because they had nowhere else to go. Now, you well, may think that you don't get rewarded for that, but I can tell you, your soul went up about two steps higher than most after this. Well, I, uh, you know, that's, that's not even the... See, that's the amazing thing to me. is it's, it's, it's not even about that. I don't even consider the exactly. idea... Exactly. Uh, and when you give that way, without consideration, without mentioning the charity, uh, that's when your soul is really expanding. You know, so maybe another angel got its wings because of you. All right. Could, <laughs> I have to go back be, to the movie. Could be, you know, but I, I wish that, uh, that many more people, when they're capable of doing something like that, you know, just did it. Because exactly. I just, I, I don't know, it just seems to me like if there was just more of that as opposed to, you know, uh, people fighting over things, people... Uh, you know, uh, sniping their neighbors and uh, causing problems with each other and, you know, fighting over whether they want to wear a red hat or not. Uh, you know, it, it's just, it, it would be a better world if people were more focused on what can I do to lift somebody else up? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, if it's one person, if it's a couple people, if it's whoever you're, you're speaking to, if it's you know, a town, if it's just one person who happens to be sitting there and you can lift them up. I don't know. I, I, I think Listen, uh, that's it could be even it, it doesn't even have to be monetary. You know, how many times do you hear people say, you know, it doesn't hurt to smile. Smile at a stranger. Who knows what that person's life is about? And sometimes a smile literally or a compliment can change a person's whole attitude. You know, somebody could be so down and out that they think they're useless or they might be thinking of uh, hurting themselves in some way. And you come along and you give them a compliment out of the blue or even just a smile. And you see, I can see it. I can see the energy change around them instantly. And that's right, and not costing you anything. Right, and the residual effect is the key here. I mean, I talk about this all the time on my show. Probably, you know, anybody who listens to me is sick of hearing it, but <laughs> it, it, it's what I call the concept of random acts of kindness. It doesn't necessarily have to cost you anything, but again, just the concept of uplifting somebody in a few seconds, talking to them, smiling at them, acknowledging them, being polite, being pleasant, uh, you know, you change somebody's day one way or another, uh, and, and you could be changing a lot of other people's days. Look, you got a miserable guy who's gone through a whole bunch of stuff all day long, and at least you broke the tension by, you know, giving him some sort of pleasantry or giving a little bit of help or a kind word, acknowledgement, doesn't matter what it is. Mm -hmm. You may be changing the lives of everybody he's going home to yeah. or the people he's going to work with or whatever because you changed the trajectory of that guy's day. Absolutely. Just a little bit. It doesn't even take a lot. Right. Chuck, we need to take something. We need to take a break. So stay uh, with us. Chuck and I will be right back, and I'll give you another story example of what you just said. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Maria. I don't often get to talk directly to the listeners here on the Gary Knoll Network, but I felt like doing that today. I know a lot of you really enjoy my show, but you might not know that I do four shows a week over at my website, maria.net. So if you're loving the show you get to hear on Sunday, come on over to my site and subscribe because I've got hundreds of hours of great shows on pretty much every topic in the universe. Uh, and that again is maria.net, M-E-R-I-A.net. And now we can get back to this excellent show. Thanks. Okay, welcome back to Hell in High Water with myself and Chuck Ocelli. Get over to ocelli.com. And show a little kindness there. Okay, Chuck needs some new equipment. He could certainly use your donations. He can use your support. 
uh, and, and, and everybody, I know my audience always knows to do the right thing, which is why so many other people are so jealous of my audience and have people banging on my door trying to get on my show. Chuck, you know, that story you just told, I got to tell you this. As you know, my granddaughter, who's a little love bug, uh, moved in with me. So I've been taking her to the gym with me. She's probably been here, well, since, I don't know, July. And there was this couple in my gym, trust me, you, there's always one couple that everybody hates, okay? Because they're nasty, they're arrogant, they're mean, uh, mean-spirited. You know, their energy field is don't even look at us, don't even talk to us. And my granddaughter, for whatever reason, befriends these two people. And what I've noticed is she'll actually go over and hug them. She'll ask how their day is, this and that. She has totally changed their personalities, and everybody has noticed it. Now, it's interesting, for a couple of weeks, they weren't at the gym, which is unusual because there's certain people that are there every day, like myself, so you notice when they're not there. Right. So for some reason, she had their phone number, and she decided to call uh, the man and see if he was okay. And I would say this couple's easily 80 years old, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, she called him and he, you know, she, she, we, she found out that he had broken his ankle. Uh, we had already found out from someone else that he had a broken ankle. So she called to see how he was doing. Uh, and yesterday they were actually back. They've probably been, you know, missing in action for at least two weeks. And Jenna wasn't with me, but I went over and I said, hello. He had a boot on his ankle, but he was still on the bike. Uh, and um, this guy looked at me. And he said, your granddaughter's phone call touched me so much. I'm so grateful that she called. I can't even begin to tell you how that made me feel. And I look at this guy like Ebenezer Scrooge before and after, and I'm astounded by what a little attention and a little love and compassion towards an old couple who, you know, obviously their kids are gone, um made such a difference. I mean, no one can believe it. Everybody else in the gym is like, what happened to those two? Okay. Uh, so, you know, what did it really cost? It didn't cost anything. You know, my granddaughter just right. sees the good in pretty much everybody and, and always tries to befriend people. Uh, I kind of worry about that about her because, you know, I know that this world shits on people like that, but I can't change her and I'm happy she's the way she is. Uh, so, you know, think about, you know, when you're walking down the street and somebody's, you know, hunched over or they're on, you know, in this town, we got a lot of people on walkers. So those little electric uh, wheelie things you go through town on and what they're going through and, and how could it hurt to open a door for somebody, you know, to ask, you know, can I help you with those packages? You know, whatever it is. Uh, and, and we just need more of that. But now we live in a country so filled with hate uh, you know, I saw uh, John Dingle's wife was being interviewed by Chris Wallace on what uh, Trump had to say about her husband. Uh, and she said something that I said, I totally agree with her. She said, social media is destroying our country. And I, I totally agree with that. All I see is, you know, especially on Facebook, so I don't really care if they ban me again. You know, at least I got back for my birthday wishes, so now I really don't care. Uh, but when I get on Facebook, even to compare it to Twitter or to Instagram, there's nothing but hate on Facebook. If hate, robots, uh, trolls, uh, you know, the, the trigger of the day. I like to call it the trigger of the day. You know, what are they, what frenzy are they whipping us into today? And I couldn't disagree with her. So something that started out to unite people is ending up isolating and destroying people. Right. Well, and that's the thing. That's why it's, it's really anti-social media. And, and that's the funny thing about that story you just told, too, is that this old couple is probably two people that are not being acknowledged, that nobody pays attention to, that, uh, you know, so in their own way, they decide to buck everybody by being, you know, the, the, the bad presence. Right. You know, like you were saying before, they were just arrogant and mean. And they this were, and that. Right, they were like a dark cloud when they walked in the gym. I'm not kidding. Right. So, you know, when, when you think about that, and then you just see that all your daughter did, or your granddaughter, excuse me, 
is acknowledge them and show a bit of care. Mm -hmm. And that's it. That turned everything around. See, isolation is a killer. And one of the things that this social media construct as it stands does is encourage isolation. Right. That's the key. We are not, okay, the creatures that we are, I know we're spiritual beings in human bodies, but you know what? The, the, the human body here, the design, the whole design, is meant to be interactive. Mm -hmm. We're meant to be psychosocial. And... That's the truth. Well, yeah, they say, look, you can read just so many statistics. A lot of old people die because of loneliness. You know, I don't, you, who wants to be that old person that dies alone? And it takes weeks before somebody even knows you're dead. You know, right. and you need human interaction. You know, for me, uh, you know, the gym has always been my place of human interaction. If I, you know, if I don't have friends where I happen to be living or whatever, uh, you find places where you have a commonality with people and you get there. I don't care if it's the Elks Club. You know what I mean? But right. to, be, to not have compassion for other people, and you see this whole, you can see the entire administration, there's no compassion here. There's no real care uh, about Americans, although I, I wonder if our government ever gave a shit about its citizens. Uh, you know, they threw us a little crumb every now and then, but, you know, they were really hogging the good stuff for themselves. Uh, but when I look at, you know, we, here it is Christmas, you got children in cages, children separated from their parents, you know, children that are the same color Jesus supposedly was, uh, and people are going to worship, you know, a baby in a manger and be okay with children in cages. That's not my idea of Christianity. And, you know, I've said it so many years on my show that it's sickening. When people say to me, are you a Christian? And, you know, I'm not any, I don't partake of any religion. But I say yes, because Christian is a verb. It's an adjective. It's what you do, not what right. you hide behind. It's not a, a shield to protect you for your hatred and, and thinking somehow or other you're better than other people. Right. Uh, no, absolutely true. Absolutely true. All right. So, you know, I keep telling people, you know, it, it's amazing. This morning I got several emails from listeners, and, uh, <laughs> and I love getting emails from them. Uh, and they're always surprised that I answer their emails. And I keep telling them, listen, uh, just like I say on my show, I'm in this with you. I'm not Oprah. I'm not some multimillionaire media talking head. I'm just like the rest of you, okay? I worry about paying my bills every month, the same as everybody else does. You know, I, I worry about, you know, health care, even with Medicare. You know, you know when, when you go to a doctor, you're still going to be paying, okay? Everybody has this illusion that it's all free. It's not, okay? <laughs> so, you know, I go to my eye doctor. You know, they bill Medicare maybe 120 bucks, and guess what? I have to pay 63 of that. So... You know, it's it's a constant state of being, and we're all in the same boat. You know, I'm not a, some, you know, billionaire pontificating to the rest of the world. That's not who I am. I'm just in it with everybody else, just like you are, Chuck. You know, right. I saw a post this morning uh, on the economy. It was on Facebook, and uh, you know, about you know how great the economy is supposed to be doing. And I saw that Jack Blood had made a comment on it. And, you know, Jack, like myself, like you, you know, we've been saying the same things for decades now, uh, and, and we get the lack of support. And Jack basically wrote, you know, I'm not doing great here. You know, I'm struggling every day. And, you know, my comment to Jack was, because people would rather pay for lies than support the truth. Uh, mm -hmm. And that's a sad state. So, you know, everybody has to realize, you know, those magazine subscriptions you have, those TV channels where you're buying the news, the lies to come in your house, like Fox News, uh, the newspapers, etc. That's a decision. You're supporting the wrong side. Uh, and, and, you know, people need to be honest with themselves. And they need to really look at, you know, where am I making a difference? And I've said it all my life. I'm going to keep saying it. You have two votes that matter. You vote with your money and you vote with your fork. So, you know, you can talk the talk, but if you're not walking the talk, you're no different than anybody else. Yeah, that's that's what it comes down to. And, uh, you know, again, sadly, uh, like you said, I mean, Jack's doing a couple things on YouTube now, I guess. 
Um, <clears throat> but he, he wound up not doing what, uh, what I was doing up until my computer just decided to fail, uh, you know, oh, God. uh, all the time. And, uh, it just, you know, when, when you're not getting the support back and, and that's not to say that there aren't people that are doing it. It's just that, uh, a lot of times those people are absent for some reason and I don't know what it is. I, I don't, I don't understand that, you know, there are people that pay for these, uh, you know, they're, they're paying for things like Netflix. You talked about Netflix before. Mm -hmm. They're paying for stuff like that and not even using it. Right. You know? Well, I, <laughs> I will tell you, all I get is Netflix and Hulu. <laughs> because I don't buy television, you know, regular television. I have zero interest in anything like that, especially with commercials. But even when I'm sitting at the gym watching, you know, what passes as the news, as soon as the commercials mm -hmm. come, come on, I unplug my headset. Because I don't want to be sold a million different drugs or be terrified that perhaps this drug they're talking about right now is a disease that I have because I think they program you to believe you have these diseases so you can buy their drugs. Uh, and I will say this, when I see the uh, GOP who are trying to defend Trump during the impeachment, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm so happy I commuted because I, I can't listen to them. I just can't. The ignorance, the hatred, and the bullshit... I am glad we have a mute button. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, okay, this guy's back up there talking. All right, time to mute it. Maybe I can go make myself a sandwich. Uh, but, uh, you know, people have to say, what am I filling my head with? Because whatever goes in your head is the life you manifest for yourself. Oh, yeah. Listen, when I was trying to keep track of those, uh, those hearings and Collins and then, uh, you know, uh, what's his name, Jordan and, mm -hmm. and all these other, you know, creepy, creepy individuals who have some ugly backstories, right. you know, screaming the same thing over and over and over again. You know what I noticed at the end of the day? Mm. My energy was sapped. It was just like, uh, right. I don't even want to report on this. Right. It's, it's that bad. I know, you know, but it's deliberate. You know, that's how they keep people down, you know, like a, like a cloud. They put a cloud over you. So every day you got to wake up and say, well, today I'm going to choose to be happy. Today I'm going to choose not to be a part of madness around me. Listen, Chuck, I've been doing this for 20 plus years, if I count radio. And people keep saying to me, how, are you, how do you function? How do you get through the day after this? How do you sleep at night? I don't let this crap affect me. You know, as soon as the show is done, man, it's time. I'm in the shower. I'm out of here. I'm at the gym. I'm, I'm working out. I'm hanging with my friends. I'm doing my laundry. Whatever you got to do, seeing my family. Uh, you can't allow this illusion, which will go down. It is imploding in front of our eyes for people with eyes to see. You can see this is the end of a dying system, and we should be happy about that. Because this system doesn't work. It doesn't work for everybody. And if it doesn't work for everybody, it doesn't work for anyone. No, this is true. But, you know, it, it's kind of like washing your hands after working on a car. Because uh, it used to be that I could just wash my hands with regular soap at the end of the day mentally and let go of all this. But to be honest with you, it's getting so greasy. <laughs> then now we need the lava soap, you know, the stuff with the abrasive in it to get it off. Mm. It, it, it's getting a little more difficult now. I'm not the veteran that you are, <laughs> but, but, but I gotta say, I, I, I feel as though it is getting more difficult, and it's because uh, of exactly what you said. The thing is imploding in front of us. The delusion of the idea that you were being represented by any of this, you gotta let go of that. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, you know, I, I do wish there was a day where we could have a system where, yeah, you know, somebody actually represented the will of the people, but no, just the highest bidder. Um, and with all that having been said, you know, Maria, I know we're coming toward the end. Uh, and I did mention the failing computer and all that. So if you don't mind, I'm just going to say this, uh, I'm not going to be able to do any live shows or any shows for a while. Uh, unless, uh, unless I get the funds to be able to, uh, to put the computer back to work. Well, if anybody out, moment, if anybody so. out there happens to have a computer, they're not working, even a laptop or an extra computer you can't use, then you absolutely need to get in touch with Chuck and get it to him. So we're going to put out into the universe that someone is going to make that computer miraculously appear for you. So we're not going to do I'm, any negative thinking around it, no negative words around it. Uh, and, and I'll tell you what, 
the, when my son was homeless uh, in California, he did some work for a homeless shelter where they went around asking for donations for the shelter. And one house, the guy opened the door, took a liking to my son, and gave him a computer. So mm -hmm. miracles happen, okay? And now, of course, it was a long time ago, He's my son is no longer homeless, and he still gives to the homeless, okay? He will give a shirt off his back to anybody. Uh, so, you know, when I look at it, yeah, my kids went through a lot of shit. They put me through a lot of shit. But at the end of the day, I turned out some pretty excellent human beings. That is that is a remarkable thing. And, uh, you know, there was a time when I was like that, too. Uh, but, uh, you know, not, not, not at the moment. And uh, for all that, I'm grateful. And I'm uh, grateful to have spent the time with you. And you know what? I I, uh, I, I celebrate the people that uh, that do care about me, and that that I care about each and every day. Not just because it's a holiday season, although it is. And the next time you and I speak, wait a minute, it'll be <laughs> the new year, won't it? <laughs> yep, it'll be twenty twenty. And I got news for you. I think we're going to see some huge and exciting things in twenty twenty. I've pretty much felt that my whole life. Uh, so don't give up, okay? I had to tell this to quite a few people this week. Uh, don't give up. You might be three feet from gold. And That's true. And, and I'll tell you one other thing really quick. 2020, you know, normally when we're not thinking about a calendar, what do we think of it as? We think of it as vision, which is clear. It's not perfect vision. Perfect vision, there's no such thing. But 2020 vision, right? So guess what? In 2020, I think clarity is going to be coming back in style. So how about that, Maria? I like it, and I like the fact that and only a, only a, a certain group of Americans really get it or appreciate this. But this will be the first year where it'll be 420 for an entire month. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody had posted on, you know, how do you, how are you surviving the holidays? How are you surviving this administration? And people are put, putting, you know, what they do, what they do, and all this stuff to try to cope. And I put pot. That's all I put, the word pot. <coughs> and somebody just wrote back pot with a question mark. I said, yeah, it surely helps you get through this world. Uh, so 420 for an entire month could be a good thing. Uh, Chuck, you know that, you know, I don't do the holidays because I, I wish people the best every day. I've always been a person that's been happy for other people, okay, for other people's success, what they have, what they earn, whatever. Uh, so, of course, I wish you and your family the best. I wish pretty much, of course, my entire audience uh, and, you know, all the great people I have on the show, you know, all the people in my life. I mean, I want everybody to be happy and I'm... I'm putting out there that 2020 has to be the end of all this madness because there's just so much I think any of us can take anymore. So, you know, we got to just focus on, like you said, and, it, and it's very astute what you said, 2020 is always clear vision, okay? And maybe this will be the year that people's eyes will actually see. They'll actually use their eyes to see and their ears to hear, and that's the best we can hope for. Precisely. Well, Chuck, you give my love to your wife and, of course, give Frankie a big kiss. And uh, do the best you can with what you got because when you do, miracles still happen. I know that sounds corny, but still happen. No, look, it's it's going to be hectic here, but it's because, you know what, uh, the, the, the right thing is not always the easy thing, but it is the best thing to do. And generally speaking, most of us have that knowledge built in. Absolutely. We don't have to be taught by uh, outsiders. You know, we were taught at some point in our lives what's right and wrong. And, you know, it's a good thing to stick on the right side of all things. Absolutely. Best you can. Right. Spike Lee said, do the right thing. You got it. All right, Chuck, you take care. Have a good holiday, and we'll talk soon. Absolutely, Mom. Thanks so much. Enjoy. Always my pleasure. Chuck Ocelli. Get over to Ocelli.com. If you can make a donation, great. And listen, I, you may just happen to have a computer you can't use. 
Uh, Chuck shouldn't have to do a GoFundMe to get a computer to do his work. Uh, so, okay, listen, let's all focus on a miracle. Let's focus on a miracle of truth for 2020, for love on 2020, uh, for the world to turn in 2020, uh, for all humans everywhere that are suffering. So again, thanks for listening to the show. Enjoy your holiday tonight, tomorrow. I'll most probably be doing a show on Thursday. I'll be back with the news. Uh, and uh, don't forget to love yourself. I hope you guys bought yourself a present before you bought presents for anybody else. Thank each and every one of you for staying with me, whether it's a year, whether it's all 20 years, 19 years. I appreciate and love every one of you. Thank you for listening and supporting the Maria Show. Tell others what you learned today. Knowledge becomes wisdom only when it's shared. Encourage others to subscribe today. www.maria.net Often imitated, never duplicated. A world of information all in one place. www.maria.net Always ahead of the curve. Always on your side. Get active or get radioactive. Subscribe today.